Right now, Venus is extremely different to Earth. It's temperature pressure conditions on the surface, the kinds of stuff it has on the, on the surface, it's got no oceans, it's very different to Earth today. We have two ideas, two models to explain that. Model one is that Venus was always a hell planet. It started off just that bit too close to the sun, it was too hot from when it formed, asteroid and comet impacts introduced heat, and its distance to the sun and the radiation the sun was putting out meant that Venus was never able to cool down enough to condense, it probably had steam in its atmosphere, but it was not, never able to condense that steam into liquid water. And once you have liquid water, a whole pile of other things can happen. And so, so this scenario one is that Venus was always the kind of world we see today. And the reason Earth isn't is simply because Earth was a little farther from the sun, got a little less sunlight, and things were a little less difficult. It was easier for that steam to condense into rivers and lakes and seas. That's how we got our oceans. And once you have those conditions, then you develop things like perhaps plate tectonics, which we know is an extremely effective way of Earth keeping its temperature cool over the last four and a half billion years. So maybe it's just distance to the sun that explains why Venus and Earth are so different. However, then we have model two. Now, one of the things we learned in the 70s when we were exploring Venus, back when we were exploring Venus a lot, that kind of went away for a while, but in the 60s and 70s, we did a lot of Venus missions. Some of those missions determined from the chemistry of the atmosphere that Venus once had a lot more water than it does today. That water has since been lost to space and we, can, we understand that pretty well. What we don't know is whether or not that water was steam in that really airily hot atmosphere or if it was liquid water because if it was liquid water or steam we'd get the same measurements we made in the 70s. So it led people to think, well maybe there's an alternative explanation for Venus. Maybe actually Venus started off quite like Earth. It had oceans, maybe it had plate tectonics, maybe it had life. And then something happened to trigger what we call a runaway greenhouse effect, which is the state in which Venus finds itself today. Now if it's model one, if it's only a function of how far you are from the sun, okay, that's pretty straightforward. What that means is when we discover other Earth-sized worlds orbiting other stars, we just need to look at how far away they are, and we have a pretty good guess that they're Venus or they're Earth. If Venus started off like Earth, Something had to have changed, to have triggered a climate catastrophe to push it into this runaway greenhouse state. If that's the case, then we have two important questions to answer. One, how can we determine if we find a Venus or an Earth orbiting another star? And is the thing that happened to Venus, did Venus get unlucky that it happened? Or has Earth been lucky that it hasn't happened? They are pretty important questions because they speak to how do you keep a world as big and complicated as Earth habitable for four plus billion years? How do you keep liquid water on the surface? How do you maintain a temperature that that's basically helps life to form and thrive? And if we can understand why Venus and Earth are so different, we'll be in a much better position to understand planetary habitability generally, including where we should be looking for Earths orbiting other stars.